Welcome to this presentation on getting started with your high CNC machine. Okay, so first off you've received your machine, you've unpacked it and uh, hooked up the wires on the control box etc. Um, all that remains to be done now is to install the uh, WMP CNC software itself um, before finally hooking up the actual uh, control module itself to, to the machine. So I've got the WMP CNC USB version here so I'm just inserting the disk into the drive Okay, so just go through the standard setup here and um, just say yes to those and it's just a reminder to register the software and um, so just send an email to info at lewitz.de and there's a serial number on your CD and if you've got the USB box you've got a serial number on it as well. You just pass those over to Burkhardt, uh, he'll be able to register you and uh, provide you with updates and further support. And so we'll just let it go into the default directories here. Uh, standard installation and just yes to these. And that will shortly finish. It's installing the drivers for the USB as well. So that's why it's important to do this installation first before you connect up uh, any USB module itself. So it's finished and it's going to ask us now to restart Windows and you would go ahead and do that step. Okay, we've rebooted the PC and I've actually just double clicked the uh, WinPCNC icon here and to bring it up and actually uh, we're asked uh, what machine it is we have in our language here so we select English and this is a 400T model I have here so I hit OK and this pre-configures pretty much most of the parameters that are needed for it so it's all compatible with, with the machine here. So that's started up and um, I've uh, connected up my WinPCNC USB module. I can switch my control box on and release the emergency stop on it. Now if I bring up, um, this is the jaw control here, it'll ask me first I want to go to reference position and I'll hit OK. And when that's finished then we'll see the um, jaw controls come up and we'll see that the machine coordinates for X, Y and Z have all gone to zero and uh, in this case workpiece coordinates are zero um, but these can often be any other arbitrary value it's not really important because what we do is uh, reset them um, when we set our start point or zero point and um, so generally to start a job what we do is just use the jog controls to jog out our machine <laughs> To some point uh, over um, the origin point on our bit of work, so if it's a rectangular bit of work, often that will be the bottom left hand corner. And we'll also define that in our artwork work settings when we created the artwork itself. So I'll just bring down the Z and then you would do a fine adjust at the end just to bring it so it's just touching the surface of the piece. And then what we would do here is actually save our local working origin. So if you look at these values here, they're currently set um, to positive values there. But if I go say to 0.xyz, we'll see x0, y0 and z is just uh, minus 1 away from that and that's the tool lift um, setting. And I'll show that a little bit later in the parameters where you set that. But that's really just a little safety margin to lift the tool off the surface. So we want to jog an x and y now uh, that we won't be scratching the surface. So that's pretty much all there is to starting the job. When we exit that, uh, we would have a job loaded up. All we click then is, is this uh, start icon, and that would start the job for us. Um, but before we do that, I'll just quickly uh, give a, a recap and overview of the parameters um, themselves, and uh, I'll just make you familiar with them. Pretty much most of all these settings have been set up with our selection of our machine but it's useful to just go over them and point out a few of the different ones uh, where you can make uh, sort of changes. Um, all these options are really just different tabs within the one parameter setting, so it doesn't matter which we select, we'll just start with tools here, and you see this is the tool uh, tab selected. Similarly, we can ch change the speeds or data format, etc. but we'll just start with the uh, tools and uh, work our way across. Um, so the important thing to note is here that these are the um, inbuilt uh, tool settings 
in this actual control software itself. If we're using a G code type software which has definitions for speeds and feed rates and stuff, um, they can be used to override all these settings. These are the, the internal settings that are used whenever we have the option um, to ignore speed commands in file. It will default um, to, to what we have here um, in these tool settings that I'm going to show you now. Um, so first of all, you can type in descriptions. Um, you can change this, for example, tool three, and uh, you can enable these tools for display up on on the the top of the bar here when the file is loaded. And you can disable these other options here just to simplify things. Uh, what we'll do. So this is the miscellaneous option within this tab. If we click on speeds, then uh, these are various velocity, velocity of plunge. Um, so that's how quickly it plunges into the material. So that's your Z feed rate down into the material. And uh, sort of conserved settings here, five millimeters a second. Uh, this velocity advance, so this is actually the feed rate. And withdrawal is the speed at which it's pulled out of the material. And obviously that can be a bit quicker because we're not actually cutting against anything. This break angle setting is just um, the maximum angle of change of direction allowed. Um, without having to, to break, uh, put a brake in the system and that's just to reduce um, flex and uh, pressure on the tool as it's turning into material. Um, the last settings here are to do with um, the Z um, pass depth. So that's saying that we're going, when we're using tool 1 and it's a, a you know, plunge operation, we're going down to a depth of 3 millimeters in that pass. We can then select repetitions so if that's zero, it'll just go in three millimeters once, but if we change this to three, for example, um, that means that it will go down three millimeters, do the, the vector, the next three millimeters, and then the next three millimeters. So that would go nine uh, millimeters in total. And then you have a, a Z correction here, but we can ignore that for now. Um, so that's pretty much uh, the tool settings there. Um, so if we look at speeds, the speeds tab, this defines um, uh, the various speed options. So you've got manual, fast and slow. This is the uh, jog control speed. So in the X, Y and Z here, we've got 30 millimeters, 30 millimeters, 20 millimeters per second. And um, these can be changed then a bit higher on the T series. Um, your manual slow, that's a slow jog speed. And um, you've also got a reference uh, speed search and so that's how quickly it goes towards the, the reference switch so you should leave the, these settings as they are for these bottom two you don't need to change those and these top ones I would recommend just leave them as the default settings to start with and later on when you get a bit more comfortable you can increase those settings as you wish uh, the rapid speed at the start here this is when you've got a um, you know a, a, a rapid speed in, in your your file that is you know the maximum speed of travel so this is actually a limiting uh, factor on the machine as well how quickly it'll travel so uh, data formats and um, these are the different data formats you can have and um, but generally if we have this identified data format uh, ticked it will auto detect what we have so it doesn't really matter what we put here it'll switch it to whatever you want and um, but generally if I'm using G code we'll leave it on DN ISO which is the G code setting if you were using HPGL and for whatever reason it wasn't auto detecting, you would just come in here and change that value to HPGL and save. And we'll just leave them on the G code setting here. Um, another option here, if you tick this real time file monitoring when that's active, whenever you load up a file, you'll have a, a, a code, a line list in here of, of your G code or HPGL, etc. And uh, it'll highlight the line it's processing as it goes through it. You can leave these default settings here. Um, one thing then, so if you're using G code, um, you'll want to um, untick this so it, it actually uses uh, the feed rates and speeds that you defined in your file. If for whatever reason uh, you just want to use hard coded values that we'd set before, you just tick this and it would ignore whatever feed rates and speeds you've got in your actual uh, G code file itself. Um, this one can be ticked because we don't actually have a uh, electronic control of the speed. It's not a high frequency spindle that comes with the machine, it's just a Krez motor which has a, a manual dial on the side. Uh, generally this will be ticked in Z coordinates and uh, this is just a convention. Uh, some uh, G code file would have a negative 
uh, cents for Z plus or other ones that have a, a plus Z for, for the Z down direction. Um, but this is set up to work with your Constricam and also your VCarve Pro and Spire type software. We leave these other settings unchanged. Um, signal dwell times generally, we can just ignore that. It's not really important for most things. Coordinates, this sets your working envelope for your workspace monitoring. These will all be zero and then this would be the maximum size of your machine, 400, 310 for this T400 model. If you're on the, the 720, it would generally be something like 720 and 540, I think it is, and 110. Um, what you may also want to do here is maybe just reduce these by five millimeters each. And um, that just gives you a little bit of extra, um, you know, margin and scope in there. And um, just to make sure you're not getting too close to the buffer when you're accelerating and decelerating. And um, these zero points can be ignored if it just happens to be whatever the current zero points is in your job controls, but they're updated all the time. Park position, you can define a park position on the absolute uh, coordinates of the table. At the moment it's set to the down at the reference switches, but you could have this set to wherever you want on the table. You could even type it in here or update it in your job controls by saving the, the park position at that current point in time. Scaling factors are, are one. That's fine for our setup. And to lift, uh, that we mentioned, this is the safety margin. When you set the working zero, it'll lift it by this amount. So if I set that to three millimeters, it will automatically lift Z by three millimeters when you set the working origin. These are, are all left untouched and workpiece monitoring is ticked. And um, so you just save those settings, and make sure they're done. Um, one point to note out, if you've got a larger machine and you need to update these settings and keep typing it in and it doesn't seem to increase, the reason is because actually the um, maximum machine parameters need to be set over here first before you would update to larger values um, for here. So if I go to machine parameters and I hit measure here, you can see 000, zero, zero and this is the actual maximum size of the machine. It should hopefully be set to what you have uh, for your particular machine, but if not, you would update these to the full uh, bed size of your machine and save that. And then in your coordinates, you'd be able then to update these to match those larger sizes that you'd set here. But so if we go back a step, we were in coordinates, that's all finished. Uh, miscellaneous parameters. These are the type of things that we need to, to just check. Start end position, whenever you finish a job, and it lifts the tool to Z0, or the Z lift height. Uh, generally, it would, it, if we hit stop, it'll stay safe there, but you can have it to move off to a zero point you've set, or a park position, um, and or origin, plus an additional tool lift. So uh, generally, for, the, for, for most scenarios, we just leave this at stop. Tool change, uh, generally, uh, you can leave this at no, but using your parameters, that assumes you'll be using the one tool for the entire job. If your G-code uh, uses multiple tools, if you have this set, then it will actually um, in incorporate a stop in the program at a tool change. Uh, I'll let you to change it out. Then you reset the Z height, and then you'll continue in the, in the program. Um, so, but for now, if I just leave this no, that's fine. as a default setting. And then the zero point in file is an important one. And um, it may be set as that as by default. I would normally change it to origin of coordinates and that means that whatever your origin in your design file, your G-code file that you've exported, it will use that as the origin. So when you set the zero uh, work point on the table, that is the zero point of the origin in your artwork file and language English obviously. Here we've got a few settings, I have this ticked auto reload, uh, drill job, dots and graphics, tick that. That just means that if you've got a single drill point, it'll put a little uh, larger dot so it's easier for you to see it. Um, save last positions it can be useful so that if you close a session, haven't touched the machine and come back to it, uh, you can continue on from where you were. But generally you would always reference your job before you start anyway, but it's just a useful thing to have ticked. And enable resume job, tick that. That means that we can stop a job midway, it'll pause it, and then when we to, to start the job again, it'll give us the option do we want to resume, we'll hit OK, and we can continue in the job we were, where we were. 
the stopwatch is what we see here it just counts up as we go along uh, to let us see how long a job has taken if you don't want that you can just tick that and you get save you'll see it disappears but generally we'll just leave that in the program machine parameters uh, this is uh, as we said the machine and maximum bed on both the physical size of your machine and generally set that to, to the maximum size of the working area and uh, or you can do it the full clamping area of the machine and you'll you'll, you'll see that dot as a dotted graphic on your bed when you've loaded up the file but generally i put it to the same as the maximum working area and the two dotted areas are on top of each other which just nicely defines the full working area reference point we can ignore this because because that's uh, set whenever we automatically reference it and we can leave these settings as they are make sure machine area monitoring is ticked and um, that's ticked off so you've got a couple of other options in here the functions tab so you might enable if you've got the fourth axis you would tick that um, or if you've got automatic tool changer tick that to, to bring up those functions and I've got this surface block tick because I use uh, my tool height sensor here as a surface block to measure the Z depth automatically. And um, the other option here is a signals. And this means uh, that this is the, the LPT uh, pin mappings to, to the different port settings. That will be pre-configured uh, whenever you install the software so we don't need to bother with that. And uh, just go back to the fault view there. And the last one, ports, I've got the USB version, there's nothing to change here. If you have the parallel port only version, you would assign your COM port settings here as well and, and type them in as to match what, whatever your system says. But that's a quick whirlwind tour of the parameters. You see there's very little to change and generally you can just start with the default settings to start with and then you can go in and tweak a few of those settings as you get a bit more confidence and experience of the system. So if you made any change, just make sure you save and uh, OK to exit. So we're pretty much ready now to go to the point of generating our G-code file and loading it into the software and then running through that and I'll show that in the next tutorial.